Hello everyone, I'm Scott Kravitt. You are fortunate enough to be in the archive of our Woodbury headquarters. Today we're here to discuss my travels to Japan and the influence of that culture. So I have the pleasure to introduce Lena Deeb, who I met at SCAD about three years ago. She's a textile student and we're fortunate enough to have her running our archive. Scott is known as the Indiana Jones of textiles. As the archivist, I am kind of the keeper of the crypt. I keep everything in order, I keep it organized, and I work one-on-one -on -one with designers in the studios and help them find their inspiration for their new production lines. My favorite part of Japan was visiting Kyoto. We were fortunate enough to visit a Shibori master dyer, and he literally takes his fabrics, usually silk, and hand dyes them in these barrels. These Shibori documents really stand the test of time. They're beautifully done, handcrafted, and maybe Lena can explain a little more technically on how these are done. So we can start with this piece right here because to really understand Shibori is to understand the meaning behind it, which is in Japanese, it translates to hand tie. The original Shibori, instead of just being tied with a string, they would use different like sized wood blocks, different shapes to create different motifs. So what we do is we take these Shibori Dai archive documents and give it to the studios. The studios translate into a modern technique, either taking elements out or redrawing it into different scales for different purposes, whether it be a print, weave, or embroidery. So we took this particular design, gave it to the studio, and we got a simplified version as this as a print in Lee Jofa Modern. Shibori has inspired many other collections. For example, Japanese-inspired art that became part of the Izu collection. So that's original art, and then we translate to a printed velvet with metallic print dye on top. So this is 19th century mulberry bark stencils. They are used for printing kimonos as opposed to weaving. They're all done by hand, and the motifs are extremely intricate. Talking about the mulberry stencils, this one right here, which has bamboo, um, really pretty cute little birds, and a lot of small details, was reinterpreted um, in a very modern way for the new Jan Showers collection. Kravit Couture, so this kind of fits into her romantic feminine collection. So what they do is they've got these mulberry barks, and they literally take instruments, and they punch out with a razor blade and a little pick, and they get great little detail, which is really incredible that you have that eye to concentrate for so long to give you a larger motif. And then they would use a dye with a mordant or a, a make a paste, and then they would just rub it onto the stencil, onto the fabric, and they would, you know, in, in a sense, they were printing. This particular piece is very fragile. It's cut by hand. This is from the 19th century. It's mounted on newspaper and it's held together because it's so delicate by human hair strands right here. So it's got some age to it, but it does translate nicely to a current textile with a modern interpretation in that textile for Lee Jofa. You can see all the really small details of the fish scales. And then if you look at the original, I mean, those details done by hand were something that you just can't really Duplicate today. Duplicate today, yeah, I agree. As you can see, there's so much to play with here in the Kravit Archive. So if you've been inspired, go on Kravit.com today and explore more of the beautiful things that we have to offer. And be sure to join us on our next journey.